Hello, good morning my brothers and sisters. Uh, how are you all today? It's a bit cloudy and overcast, but God, we need the rain as well as the sunshine. So if it rains, the gardens will benefit. So let's pray for one another today. Lord, I just thank you for your many blessings today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace towards us, for the food that we have to eat, the roof over our heads. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling and those who are homeless today. Lord, that you would be able to provide accommodation for them and a safe place to be, Lord, where they can have all the help that they need and support that they need. And if they need privacy and just to be on their own, Lord, just uh, be, be, uh, be in their situations, Lord. Amen. Well, as I say today, I am starting a new study, one I'm quite nervous about because it's not one I really, you know, I completely understand everything, but I'm praying that God, as we go through this study, that God will open up the Word of God to us and help us to understand. I'm looking at the book of Revelations. Wow, there's a challenge, everybody thinks it is a challenge. But yet God says if we read it and we study it, we will know his blessings. I'm using um, a little booklet that I've had for many years, Notes and Outlines by Dr. J. Werner McGee. And he just gives outlines, but the studying and the rest of it we will go into ourselves as we discuss this every day. And let me start with this. Right there was John the Apostle. He was in prison on the Isle of Patmos and God gave him a number of visions and dreams that uh, of the future and what was to come. There are many interpretations of the book of uh, uh, theories about it, but I don't want to discuss theories. I want to discuss what it actually says. And then it's up to us then to allow the Holy Spirit to show us what is the correct things to be doing. Let's look at it then. I'm just going to do my mostly background information today and we'll see how far we get because it's uh, 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. Okay, striking features it says in my outline here. It is the only prophetic book in the New Testament. I hadn't thought about that one before, but yes, it's the only, when you do think about it, it's the only prophetic book in the New Testament. There were prophecies, but this whole book is de dedicated to prophecy. And the word revelation, to start with, actually means apocalypse. And that speaks of the end, the end times and the beginning of something new, I believe. John the writer reaches further back into eternity past than any other writer in scripture. Let's look at John chapter St. John is Gospel of John, chapter 1, and let's read a few verses from there. John, chapter 1. If you're following with me in the Bible, I'm reading from the King James Version. Okay, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. We know the Word to be Jesus Christ. Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He was, he is God. He was there at the very beginning before the world was even made. God and Jesus was there. All things were made by him and without him, without him was not, not anything that was made. Made that was made. And in him was light and the light was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay. So, you know, John goes further back than most writers. And he talks about where God was before the beginning of the earth, before anything was was started. He reaches further, further into the future than any other book and writer. You know, which is a good writer. He reaches further on into eternity future in the book of Revelations. Special blessing is promised to the readers of this book. Revelations chapter 1 and verse, let's read verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy 
and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Yes, I believe we're living in the last days today. So it's good to look at what's what's happened already and what is about to happen in the future. Special blessings, we've just read. And it also says in here, in Revelations 22, verse 18 and 19, it's important to read these verses as we begin this study. Revelations 22, verse 18 and 19. I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of the, this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So, there are blessings from reading this book, but there is also curses for if you take out of the book and you add your own bits in and you you mess about with it, you know, and, uh, you know, so it's better to be careful in what we do. And Revelations is not a sealed book. It's not sealed. Revelations chapter 22 and verse 10. 22 and verse 10 says and he saith unto them seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand so the time is at hand you know this book is not sealed up it's open for anyone to read in contrast to Daniel 12 and verse 9 which says I'm enjoying this myself, going through this with you. So it's Daniel 12, verse 9 says, I'm enjoying this, so God bless this study. Daniel 12, verse 9 said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So not like Revelations is an open book, some of what Daniel wrote was sealed up until the end times where it will be revealed. It is a series of visions. The book is expressed in symbols. This book is like a great grand station, like, uh, you know, a very big railway station where all the lines come into it, uh, where the great trunk lines of prophecy come in from other portions of Scripture. Revelation does not originate, but consummates. It completes. It brings everything together that's been prophesied throughout the whole Bible. It is imperative to a right understanding of the book to be able to trace each great subject of prophecy from the first reference to the end. At least ten great subjects of prophecy find their consummation here. The Lord Jesus Christ, in Genesis 3.15, the Church, Matthew 16, verse 18, the resurrection and the translation of saints. Remember, we discussed that when we went through the book of Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 to 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 and 52. It also talks about the great tribulation that's to come. And it's, that was prophesied in Deuteronomy 4, verse 30. Let's look at that. Deuteronomy 4, and verse 30. There's a lot of scriptures in this outline. We won't go through every one. But if you want to do it as a private study, I'll tell you which ones they are. Deuteronomy 4, and verse 30 and 31. When thou art in tribulation... And all these are things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, which I believe we're living in today. If thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he say were unto you. So it's even prophesied, the great time of tribulation is prophesied in the book of Deuteronomy. It's good to know, isn't it? It's in Ezekiel 28 
hang on, let's, let's, uh, it also talks about Satan in Revelations, but it also talks about him, Satan and evil, in Ezekiel 28. So bear with me while we look up these scriptures. Ezekiel 28, and what is it? Ezekiel 28, verse 11. I hope you enjoy this study, brothers and sisters, and you get with it, because uh, it's good for me as well as for you to read these things. Ezekiel 28, verse 11 to 18. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lament unto the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious storm was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, and the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of the, thy tablets, of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub, but covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy tra traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth, and the sight of all them that behold thee. And all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. That was against, that was the Satan. He had everything. He had all beauty. He had all the favour of God. He had everything. And then he fell into sin, and was cast out of heaven and then we'll read again uh, from verse 1 to 10 and this talks about the man of sin that is mentioned a lot in the book of Revelation the word of the Lord came again unto me saying son of man say unto the prince of Tyrus thus saith the Lord God because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yea, thou art a man, and not God, though thou settest thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver unto thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. Wilt thou yet say before him, Thou slayest thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. That's talking about the man of sin. I'm not going to go into that in detail because we, we, that will be discussed as we study further into the book of Revelations. 
It also talks about the course and end of apostate Christendom. Now if you look back at some of my studies, we spoke about apostasy and that's following Jesus Christ and turning your back on him and going back to the things that you used to do. And we need to be careful because if we fall into that trap and that sin, that's it. We've lost our place with God. So let's go to Daniel chapter 2. It's good to compare prophecies and the word of God. And it's good to check out these scriptures. So if you can't find them quick enough, write them down and go back and look at them later on today or when you can. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 31 to 35. Thou, O king, sawest and become behold. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent. Look before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of, of iron, his feet of iron and clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, and the silver, and the gold, broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them. No place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The interpretation, First World Empire, Babylon, Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 36. This is a dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And whithersoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the he heaven, and he hath giveth, he given, he, heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them. Thou art his head, this head of gold. Second and third world empires, Medio Persia and Greece. After thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. And then the third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Fourth world empire is Rome. And the fourth kingdom shall be brought as iron, for as much iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And wherefore thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Christ's kingdom to be established on earth. And in the days of these kings, saith the God of heaven, set up a kingdom. The God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation therefore sure. What you can see is there is the great kingdoms that came after um, Nebuchadnezzar that were destroyed. Some say that we are living in the days of the iron and the clay, where Rome and European Union and everything else, but that will be broken up as well and destroyed when Jesus comes back, when he establishes his kingdom. And there are other kingdoms which think they are great and powerful. America, maybe. China. 
and God will wipe them up and destroy them and bring them to ashes. There's many, many prophecies and many interpretations. So I ask you to pray prayerfully as we study these things that God will reveal what's going on to you today. There is so much being fulfilled in the world of prophecy today. We need to understand them and we need to, do, we need to discuss them. And also Jesus talks about it in Matthew 13. If you'd like to read that in your own time. It also talks about the beginning course and end of the time of the Gentiles. We're in the time of the Gentiles now. Where the Jews were rejected because they rejected Jesus. And the Gentiles, the gospel was sent out to the Gentiles. And you know a Gentile is someone who is not a Jew. So you were a Gentile, you know. But the time of the Gentiles will come to an end. And it talks about these scriptures in Daniel 2, verse 37, and Luke 21, 24. Shall we look at Luke 21, 24? Luke 21, and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's talking about the scattering of the Jewish people. During the time of Rome. And other times where they've been scattered upon all the world. And there's other prophecies to say that Jews will come back to Jerusalem. And they will be established as a nation again. Which happened in 1946 or 47 I think. And recently we've been recognised by um, Donald Trump as, as Israel as being uh, a nation again. And he's put his, his um, embassy there. These are all fulfilment of prophecy. And let's look at Je the next one. is the second coming of Christ. Jude, which is the book just before Revelations. Jude. And in Jude is one, one book, one chapter. And so let us read from Jude 14 and verse 15. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these sayings, Behold the Lord come us with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have forsaken against him. It's talking about the sin of the nations, and how God is going to judge them, and that when Jesus comes again and sits on the throne in Jerusalem. Israel made many covenants with the people. Uh, God made many covenants with Israel, sorry. And... Uh, and the five things were promised to Israel, which you can read in Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Let's look at key verses in Revelations. The book of Revelation, or Apocalypse, is the correct word for it. I am, verse, Revelations 1, 18. I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Have the keys of Hades, hell, and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Let me have a little drink. Ginger and lemon tea. That's a bit refreshing and helps me to stop coughing. So we're going to look at Revelations chapter 1 now. The person of Jesus Christ, Christ in glory. A, title of the book, Revelations or Apocalypse, Method of Revelations. And there's a Bible study if you want to study it in, in, in Revelations. Greetings from John the writer, from Jesus Christ in heaven. E, the post-incarnate Christ is glorified, is in a glorified body, judges his church. The great high priest in the Holy of Holies. And time division of the contents of the apocalypse. And interpretation of the seven stars and the seven lampstands. 
So let us begin reading it. We may not be able to cover all the chapter today, but I've just given you an introduction. I hope you found that interesting, where there are prophecies, where John talks about before creation, during creation, during different prophecies from the scripture that these things will come. Introduction in verse 1 to 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. John was with Jesus. He was the beloved disciple. He was with Jesus all through his ministry. And even into the end, when he died on the cross, he was there. And he wrote the Gospel of John and the Epistles of John, 1st, 2nd and 3rd John. He wrote those books as well. So we know his witness is true, because he was there. And he had this vision. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the prophecies of this prophet, the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And I believe it's, we need to be reading this book now and studying it because the time is at hand. Jesus is coming. It's closer than we can think. There are many prophecies in scripture about famine, persecution. Uh, there would be diseases, outreach, and we're experiencing one of them right now. This could be the beginning of something worse. So we need to make sure we are right with God. The message of the ascended Lord to the seven churches. Things past, the things which, have, that, which thou hast seen. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace. From him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So we had a greeting from John, now we're having a greeting from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ told John to greet the people, and it, the evidence of who he was, was he was, he was the first faithful witness who stood for God and obeyed him right to the death and to the resurrection and to the ascension into heaven. And it talks about to him here. He is the great prince of all the kings of the earth and to him that loved us. Jesus loved us so much. He came and he died for us to wash us from our sins and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And hath made us kings and priests. You know you're a priest today. You're part of the royal priesthood of God. Because now you can go into God's presence. The curtain, the veil that veiled us before going into God's presence has been ripped apart because Jesus died. And so that we can walk in, that we can be holy before God. We can walk into him and we can be in his presence. Made us kings and priests unto God. Like the priest had to scatter blood over the mercy seat once a year, he had to sacrifice. We don't need to do any of that anymore. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Praise him. And has made us priests, kings and priests unto God. You know you're a king? You're royal? You're part of the royal line of Jesus Christ now? Because his blood covers you and washes you? We live his bloodline now. I like that. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail before him. Even so. Amen. He's coming again. He's coming again. He's coming very soon. Are you ready for his coming? Are you looking for his coming? Are you looking for the signs that he said would come in the skies and in the heavens and on the earth? And wars and rumours of wars, famines, earthquakes, pestilence, you know, diseases that all said to you. 
he's going to come in the clouds. He's coming to end it all, to stop all the suffering in the world, to judge the world and to judge those evil people who are doing these things. Even so, Amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come. Alpha and Omega is the beginning, Alpha is the first, and Omega is the last letters of the Greek alphabet. You know, so he is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He was there at the beginning, he will be at the end of the age, at the beginning of a new age, where there will be a thousand reign of Christ upon the earth, before he folds it all up and destroys it all and makes an, and a new heaven and a new earth you know i'm looking forward to that because we will be with him if you're a believer you'll be with him you will judge nations you will be as a priest and a king in those day, in the days when he comes back to reign if you are following him if you trust in him i think that's quite a lot of information for one day so please Bear with me, come back again tomorrow and I will do the next part of the chapter. And I like the, the next bit and the next two, next chapter after that which goes on about the churches and how those churches are an example of the churches today and how God is going to judge those churches and those people. But let's uh, finish up with this today and please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try and go through the book of Revelations, you know, with you supporting me. Please subscribe, ring the bell icon, that we can do this together. If you have any comments, please leave them at the end of the message. If you need any prayers, please leave them, that I will be praying for them. I haven't had many prayer requests recently, but I do have one that's very important that we please pray for our sister Dawn. She's an evangelist. She is out there working in um, Uganda. I had to think then. And she's building a church and an orphanage out there. At the moment, she's experienced some difficult financial difficulties because she has had some children which she's taken off the streets that were homeless and had no family and become like a mother to them. She's endeavouring to feed them, clothe them. So if you, uh, you know, if you'd like to give anything financially towards that, if you contact Bethel Community Church and go to their website, then you there will be there will, you will be able to contact someone who will be able to give you further information. I think Liz or Hello Shea is actually set and has actually done something about that. So please contact them and. Or if you cannot give, please pray. Please pray because her visa runs out. And obviously because of COVID-19, she's isolated. They're stuck, at, stuck in their house. They're not allowed to go out in Uganda as well. We need to pray for those who are suffering in India where they have no food. We are blessed here in our country and in the West where we're not without food. Although I believe a time of famine is coming and we need to be prepared for that. Because of this virus is the beginning of beginnings of something coming. So let's pray to God that he will be with us. He will protect us and help us. And help us to go through this. And to make our stand and be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not ready for that today. Then please ask him to come into your life. To forgive you of your sins. And he will give you that new life and that promise. That you will not go through all the things. And the hell and the suffering. And the you know the lake of fire. And all those things which we are going to read about over the next days and weeks. So please you know. Give your life to Jesus. Let him take control. Put yourself right with God if you have fallen away and you are backslidden. And you're not following him as you should be. Or, you know, ask him to come and to bless you. Let's pray. Let's have a drink first. Lord, I just thank you, my heavenly Father and gracious Father, that you came and died upon a cross, that cruel cross, so that we wouldn't have to suffer what you suffered. That, Lord, we can have our sins forgiven. 
Lord, I pray, Lord, that as this message goes out today, that it would challenge someone, it would work in their lives, that your Holy Spirit would convict men and women of their sins, that, Lord, you would have your way in, the, in this world today. Lord, we don't like what's going on in the world. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would step in, Lord. Come soon, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But Lord, we don't come until many more come to know you as Lord and Saviour. Lord, we want to pray, Lord. We want to thank you that Boris Johnson has recovered from this COVID-19 and he's back at work today. I pray, Lord, Lord, you will put your hand upon him, that he will realise that it's prayer of the nation and the peoples that's healed him and he's got through this. Lord, that he is now has a big challenge and a big big responsibility ahead of him, Lord, and decisions to be made. Lord, where they have this Cobra meeting in the mornings, it may be over now and the decisions are being made for the future. I just pray, look, Lord, that you will give them the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding to make the right choices, the right decisions. Lord, that they would repent and come to know you as Lord and Saviour and turn this nation back into you before it's too late and all the nations of the world, America, Lord, Lord, and all the other countries, Lord, China, and the European Union, and Asia, and Australia, and America, South America, North America, Canada, Lord, and I pray for people, I pray for people like Shannon and Ray Davis, that does Omega Man Radio, they're trying to get the warnings and the, the message out, he is, through the many speakers that he has, I pray that you would continue to bless it, that many more people would be able to tune in and know what's about to happen and what is happening, that the truth that we don't hear from the media, Lord, would get out. Lord, I pray, Lord, for our doctors and nurses and our NHS system and other health services throughout the world that are always struggling at the moment. Thank you, Lord, that there's, we've hit a peak in this country and it seems like it, that things are getting better. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, we will not take our eyes off you. Take our eyes off the goal, Lord, that we would keep keep safe, stay at home, and, Lord, doing all the things that we are asked to do, Lord, so that this disease will not spread, that we will not stop lockdown too soon, Lord, that where we will lose a lot more people. Lord, I pray for all those who are working on the front line. Lord, those people that are serving you in the NHS, you know each one. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are providing food for us in this country. But Lord, we pray for those countries like in India and those places where the people are starving, Lord, because they've lost their work. I pray that you will step in, Lord, and the rich people, there are many rich people in India, like that guy who's opened up uh, food restaurants are providing hot food free to the people who need it. The many more people who are rich and wealthy will do the same thing, Lord, that you would use that. I pray for our lorry drivers. I pray for safety on the roads. I pray for our factories that are producing the necessary things that this country needs. And, Lord, I pray for our shipping industry on everywhere, Lord, that's uh, bringing in food and aid to this country too. I pray your blessing upon them. Lord, I want to pray for Dawn, Lord, that you would provide for her needs in Uganda. Lord, that you would pour out, the, open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon her. Lord, that she will have everything she needs to continue the work of evangelism and that soon she will be out and be able to carry on doing the crusades. In the name of Jesus, that her visa will come through, that Uganda would give her a permanent visa that she could settle there and serve you, but that your will will be done in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for those who have been abused and sexually, physically, emotionally uh, suffering abuse at this time. Lord, we pray for whatever has happened in this London with this stabbing again. Lord, we bring the families and the people involved, Lord, to you. Lord, that you would give them your peace. The police will find out exactly what's gone on. And Lord, justice would be done. But Lord, also that you would help those families who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who have lost loved ones who are in COVID-19. Lord, that you would be with them. That they would turn their eyes on Jesus and they would completely trust in you. 
and put you first in everything. Lord, I endeavour to put you first in everything in my life. Help me, Lord, as I study this Revelations book, your revelation to the world, Lord, that, Lord, we would understand it and we would be faithful to you and draw near to you and be ready for your coming. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you, guys. That's about 10 or 15 minutes longer than what I've been doing of late. But thank God, it's his word. Lord Jesus, I pray you his blessing over you and that he would keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you and give you his peace and shalom. Please subscribe, share this message with other people and your friends and family so that people will know what's about to happen and what is happening. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.